Good evening. We're going to spend a little bit of time this evening looking at a little trick for the IFD 540 and 550. This relates to the ability to intercept a published course. And uh, it's something that I bumped into a few times. I figured out a way to do it, and I thought I'd share it with you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fly right back to where we came from here, which is 68 India Sierra. We're going to do that using the uh, LPV approach. And uh, to do that, of course, I hit the procedure button. RNAV 9. And I'm going to go Victor Simmons. And as we go to the map mode, we see that that takes us off to the south of the airport and then inbound. So I'll get up in the air here and I'll fly south on that. Now, the, 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 uh, the thing we'd like to avoid is flying all the way to Simmon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go partway through here and then I'm going to go straight west. I'm going to intercept the, uh, the uh, published approach course between Simmon and Kite and uh, show you how that works. That's the point of the flight today. So let's get off the ground. Go ahead and film the takeoff just for fun. Everything looks good, altitude. Oh, the sun just went behind a cloud. Here I am outbound to Sim intersection. I can scroll out a little bit and see there's Sim and Kite after that. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is rather than go all the way out to Sim and then come all the way back to Kite, I just want to cut the corner. So what's the best way to do that? If, if I just go direct Kite right now, it'll draw a line directly to Kite and I'll have a really bad intercept angle and I won't be on a published uh, segment of the approach course. So what I want to do is I want to go west until I do intercept the published approach course and then turn inbound to Kite. So what's the best way to do that? Well, it's a two-step process. First, I'm going to turn off GPS steer. I'm going to heading mode. And then in heading mode, I'm going to just go straight west. So as we can see, we're going to turn to straight west. I might even turn a bit more. To cut the corner off. Maybe a little bit more. We'll make it a 90 degree turn. That'll help with my uh, intercept angle. So as you can see, we can get a pretty good idea what our intercept angle is going to be. Of course, the airplane takes a little bit of time to respond to the, uh, uh, to the heading bug. Okay, so now I've kind of got the idea. I'm going to come up and intersect this published approach leg coming up here. So how do I do that? Well, the trick is... Um, I go to FMS mode, and I roll over to Kite Intersection, and I hit Direct. And you see what it does is it paints me a, a, a plan for getting to Kite. I can zoom, go in here and zoom a little bit. If I were to roll this right now, it would change um, my destination. It would change my flight FMS listing selection. But I could go in with my touch here, and I can zoom in on it. Now I just watch this line, because as I go closer and closer to this published approach course, it keeps re -re repainting what the GPS steer topography would be, or a, a, a plan would be. So I just hold here, I just hold until it says that I'm going to overlay the published approach course. So I'm going to get started now. Go to GPS mode, GPS steer mode, and it starts turning me onbound, inbound. And when I finally become inbound, as you know, as you can see by the, the course line, it's going to be directly over the published, uh, the published leg on the uh, instrument approach there. Now I can go back to map mode here and, uh, and zoom in and watch it, or I can watch in match mode down here and watch here on the synthetic vision with the flight plan 
as it wraps around the corner. Now, on that mode, of course, there's not much to see because we're going a little bit outside the radius of the um, of the turn. But um, it'll catch up on that. GPS steers nice like that. I am flying a little bit faster than I normally shoot approaches, so that's probably got something to do with why it's running around the outside like that. And, you know, in hindsight, I could have started a little bit earlier and then repunched it again from here. See, the mode I'm in is GPS moving to LNAV plus V. Oh, I see you have traffic above me coming down. So it's interesting to see. Gosh, gosh, traffic heading home, I'm guessing. Wonder if you saw me too. Draw out a little bit. We can see kite coming in, and we can see the inbound leg. Shortly we'll see the countdown. Yep, there we go. Ten seconds to the next leg. Six, five, four, three. Just illuminated the next leg. I have switched my autopilot, which is an STEC 60 2. I've switched it over to nav mode, and it is now armed glide slope, which uh, it has to be established on the localizer course for 10 seconds for glide slope to arm. It's already armed. Now, what's sort of interesting here is I can flip over here to the uh, uh, synthetic vision view, and now that it's armed for the approach, I've got my left, right, and up, down, my glide slope uh, display showing here. You notice the little green airplane there is, is busily tracking back to the, um, the um, course, the inbound approach course. So that's, uh, that's actually the analog autopilot doing its soft capture that we're seeing in terms of the heading. The heading is being selected now by the analog autopilot, again doing soft capture. Uh, the, the GPS in this case, rather than guiding with the GPS steer, is just uh, showing my ground track compared to uh, what it knows to be my position and my um, tended ground track. So that's a nice way for the digital side of this house to be um, validating the uh, analog side of the house. Of course, we still have our left-right needle here, and uh, that's that's given me uh, my indications as to where I should be going. I also have the same left-right needle on my Aspen. So we're at 2,600 feet, which is the uh, a little bit 50 feet high. Um, And on the bottom one here, we can see our, our plan. Throw out a little bit on that if we like, or in. See, we do have a little bit of a north wind here, so I'm holding off uh, a few degrees. You can see that the airport is over here. Or the, the next intersection is actually what's flagging right now, because that's the next waypoint on the, uh, uh, on the flight plan. But my actual heading is several degrees to the left of the inbound course. In fact, the inbound course probably on the chart that I uh, could bring up if I wanted to, but I'm going to fly it this way. I think it might be 91, and I'm actually flying 79. It says it's going to start down in 876, which is all good to know. out there. We can see it in the SVS. Uh, I have to scroll out to see it here in the plan form. Yeah, there's one here. There's one there. This one's at the same altitude. Right by the airport. Zero, zero. So he might be in the pattern. Headed to the northwest. Oh, he's going down. 
I do have my headlight on along with all of my anti collision. And we're starting down. I'm going to pull some power because uh, otherwise I'm going to get going real fast here. But it's visibly correcting down. I also don't have any drag. Uh, I'm going to put 10 degrees of flaps out, which I can do up to 130 knots. A little drag going. That'll help me hold glide slope also. Got distracted by the traffic there. Casadero, Cardinal 7 Kilo Pop is on the uh, GPS approach to uh, 09, and we'll do a low pass. Okay, so now at 1,000 feet, all I see here is my 1,000 foot altitude floor. So that doesn't help me too much on the synthetic vision. Uh, otherwise, uh, all I can really do is see that the little airplane is on top of the little airport symbol, which is interesting to know. Um, also, I can see my glide slope here, so I think I will hold the glide slope. Uh, busily chasing it here because I've been giving it some power excursions. Well, this way lets me track my traffic too. There's one at 100 feet above. It's off the end of the runway pretty far now. We're on the glide slope. We're on traffic, ten o'clock, turning left downwind, runway one eight, and we're See the airport coming up there, the, air, the runway lights just flipped on. 500. A little bit of a shame that the airport and the, uh, the runway 09 and the little green airplane happen to be right behind the, uh, the uh, glide slope tape there. So yeah, I'm gear up, I have top flaps up. I'm going to go ahead and fly this down to um, just off the runway so we see how well it does. So there's 1,100 feet. That's 300 feet above ground. There's actually 150 feet. So right at 150 feet is where it does. Go around. That's how the approach works. Pretty darn well, really. Pattern altitude. Running the pattern at 45 degree angle. Yes, zero. Cardinal, 7 to the pop. Joining the left downwind. 27, full stop. Yes, zero. Beam the runway. Second notch of flaps. Pull the power. Trim, trim, trim. 500. And it's going to kill the Papa's left base. Final 2-7, Casadero. Got a green. 